Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Now that all my gravid females have given birth, I have lots of baby boas to get feeding and established. Today I want to share with you my general procedures for getting baby boas to start feeding. I'm also going to share some tips and tricks that you can use if you have a reluctant feeder in order to get it to take its first meal. If you want to learn all about keeping and breeding boas in captivity, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. I just thought I'd grab one of my 2020 babies. This is a qual key animal. This guy I'm actually holding back and fortunately this guy ate for me with no problem. First I wanted to say that this video is specifically for boa breeders. If you're buying a baby boa, make sure it's feeding uh, when you get the animal. A responsible breeder should make sure the animal has fed at least three or four times. So be sure to ask about the animal's feeding history and make sure that your animal is feeding before you get it. I've heard some stories about breeders that send out baby boas that aren't eating, including island boas, which are really hard to get to feed. So just make sure you ask the questions from your breeder. My general procedure is to start feeding baby boas shortly after they shed. And they typically shed at about 10 days of age. So I'll usually feed them the first time when they're about two weeks or so of age. And the first meal that I give them is a live fuzzy mouse. I know that feeding live is somewhat controversial, but with baby boas, it's definitely a lot easier to get them feeding if you offer a live uh, mouse for the first few feedings. So first you wanna make sure that you have optimal environmental conditions within the animal's enclosure. You want a hot spot of about 90 degrees and a cool side of about 75 to 80 degrees with humidity between 60 and 80 percent as well as hiding places and you want hiding places on both the cool side and the warm side i offer the live fuzzy mouse and typically i put it in the hiding place where the boa can get it and boas will feel more comfortable feeding if they have some privacy so you want to put it in that hiding place with the boa and then you want to not disturb the boa for at least several hours to overnight. Just give your baby boa the opportunity to feed and make sure that there's no loud noises or bright lights. You just have to give them some space so that they can feed. Sometimes if they're not comfortable or if they're stressed, they're not gonna feed. So you wanna keep the stress and any external stimuli to an absolute minimum. Go back and check after a few hours and often a uh, baby bow won't eat the first time. So this is nothing to be worried about. Just try again in about a week or so. And then if after two or three times your animal still isn't eating, then maybe you should consider trying some of these tips and tricks I'm gonna describe. And I'll just say that most of my boas do feed within the first few times, uh, including the true red tails and most of the Central American boas and other types of locality boas. The one exception are the island boas. And I found island boas are the hardest to get to feed. And generally in any litter of island boas, I'll have at least a few animals that don't want to feed. And this includes Pearl Island, Hog Island, Crawl Key, uh, Cocker Key, etc. What I found are the absolute hardest are the Hog Islands. I don't know if this is just specific to my Hog Islands, but uh, in general, only about half of them will eat from the beginning on the live fuzzy mice. So I have to use a lot of tricks with my hog island boas. In general, with the other types of island boas, I have, you know, maybe two or three from each litter that are difficult to get to feed. In fact, with my crawl keys this year, I had 13 babies and all but one of them fed uh, on its own. Thought I'd get out this 2014 holdback male Suriname red tail. And as you may know, if you've been following my videos, this guy had his first litter this year which I was very excited about. He was actually the number one holdback from my first litter of red tails. It was born back in 2014. And he actually didn't feed from the get-go. It took him about a month and a half to two months to finally feed. And you know, as you might uh, imagine, I was very stressed out because he wouldn't feed and you know, him being such a nice animal. Finally, he fed on a live fuzzy mouse. I just kept trying and finally he fed. Uh, I would say also at this time that if you are breeding boas, it really pays to have a good source of live fuzzy mice and you know live mice of all sizes for that matter. Um, so 
although in general it might not pay off to breed your own rodents, I do breed a few tubs and mice specifically for this purpose. And I find it, you know, a lot of work and I don't really like the smell and there's a lot of negatives with having the mice. But you really can't beat a constant supply of live fuzzies for your baby boas. You may be lucky and you might have a pet store or breeder close by that can supply them. But I was not in that situation and it really made sense for me to breed my own. If you've tried two or three times and your baby boa is still not feeding, especially if it's an island boa, there's a number of tricks that you can use to try to coax your animal to feeding. And I've tried most of these and in general there's no cure-all. None of these tricks work all the time and some of them I haven't even had any success with, but they're definitely worth trying. So the first is just to offer a different food item than a mouse. You might want to try a pinky rat or if you have access to lizards, some of the island boas supposedly prefer lizards as their first prey. You can also try different types of rodent, pinkies or fuzzies. I've heard that dwarf hamsters and gerbils might work. And in fact, I considered setting up a colony of dwarf hamsters specifically for this reason, but it was, I just didn't have the bandwidth for more rodents breeding uh, with my limited space and resources. The second thing you can do is pretty similar. You just want to do something called scenting, where you transfer the scent of a different prey item to your fuzzy mouse. Basically, you want to take different types of prey items, lizards, hamsters, birds, even tuna fish juice, and you want to make a puree. You can grind them up in a blender to the, like this milkshake type consistency, and then you want to smear that on your live fuzzy mouse. And you can try lots of different recipes. I've tried just tuna fish juice, which seemed to work in at least one uh, case. I've tried, you know, lizard parts. I've tried different types of rodents. And what I'll say is that it, I have a limited amount of success with the scenting. It doesn't work all the time. For some animals, it seems to work, but it's definitely not a cure-all. And you can basically make a puree and you can freeze it and just thaw out a small amount for each time you're going to try it. The third trick, which has actually probably worked the best for me, is just putting your baby boa with the food item in a confined space. And one trick is to use a paper lunch bag like this. So basically, you're just going to put the baby rodent in the lunch bag and then put the snake in there. And then you want to kind of fold it down like this and you want to tape it in place. So the idea is that the baby snake is in a confined space with the baby rodent. So it's right uh, in front of it and it, you know it's very close and it can't really get away. So then you just put it back in the tub or enclosure and you give it a, from a few hours to overnight to eat the food item. Similarly, you can use a deli cup like this. Put the, the mouse and the snake in the deli cup, put the lid on, put it back in your enclosure. Be sure, of course, the deli cup has air holes before putting it back for obvious reasons. The next trick is called braining. And obviously you don't want to do this on a live animal. But what you do is you take a thawed, frozen, fuzzy mouse and then you just cut a slit in the back of its head and kind of smush its brain so the brain gets smeared on the back of its neck and the top of its head. And it's, you know, kind of gross. But the smell of the brain, supposedly, causes some reluctant feeders to eat the item. You take the brain rodent and you just put it in the enclosure in the hiding place and you give the animal from a few hours to overnight to, to eat the prey item. And this hasn't worked really well for me, but other people claim that it has worked for them. And then one final similar type of trick is boiling the prey items. You take your thawed frozen uh, fuzzies and you boil them at Boiling, boiling water for about a minute or so. And then immediately you take them out while they're still steaming hot and you put them in the enclosure with the snake. And I tried this and it actually did work for me a few times. I was worried that it might burn the snake, but the rodents cooled down really quickly. So you don't have to worry about burning the snake. And apparently when you have a nice piping hot rodent, it makes it more uh, palatable and more uh, attractive to the baby boa. Your bow is now about two and a half months old and you tried all the tricks 
and it's still not feeding. So what do you do at this point? Well, the next step would be force feeding or the more gentle form, assist feeding, where you're basically making the boa eat against its own will. Some breeders choose not to assist feed because if it's done incorrectly, it can cause physical and psychological damage to the snakes. And also because if you don't do this and only the animals that eat voluntarily survive, then over time the captive population will get stronger and you'll have less animals that won't feed to begin with. When I first started breeding, my intent was not to ever use assist feeding, but then I had a, my first litter of craw key boas and of the 13, five of them didn't ever feed. And they, you know, watching them kind of waste away and then they, they eventually died when they were about four months old, it was just heartbreaking. So I resolved from that time on that I would try uh, assist feeding in the next year. And this is actually an animal. This is a Pearl Island boa female from last year. She didn't feed at first and the tricks didn't work. And so when she was about two and a half months old, I started assist feeding mouse tails. And uh, she needed to be assist fed for about another two and a half months until she finally started eating on her own. And I was really happy because she was the only female from the litter and definitely a beautiful animal I wanted to hold back. And there's different ways of force feeding and assist feeding, but I found the easiest and less, least stressful way is to use mouse tails. You basically just cut the, the tail off of a dead thawed rodent, mouse, not a rat. And then you want to lubricate the tail by either soaking it in water or better yet use egg white because it's nice and slippery. And then you take the tail from the thick end that's connected to the body of the mouse and you just gently insert it into the mouth as gently as possible. You kind of need to gently pry open the jaws of the animal, your boa, and then you just gently push the tail back. And you want to make sure it's going down into the throat and not the epiglottis, which is the, the breathing tube. But it's pretty unlikely you're going to hit the epiglottis, so it should go right into the throat of the animal. And you kind of gently push it back until there's maybe an inch or less of the tip of the tail sticking out. And then you put the snake back in the enclosure. And generally they'll continue to swallow the mouse tail. I often will give two mouse tails at a feeding and I actually do this every week because mouse tails don't have a lot of nutrition to them. It's just a minimal amount of calories just to sustain your boa. And so I do the assist feeding a few times and then I offer a live fuzzy mouse. And sometimes they take it, sometimes they don't. Um, the most I've ever had to do this, like this animal, I assist fed for about two and a half months. Some animals, I just keep doing it and unfortunately they just never come around. And you know, I do lose a few uh, island boas every year because they just don't take food. Uh, but a lot of them do take food after doing this procedure. And they go on and they become, you know, very healthy uh, adult animals. Like, you know, this animal is on her way to being a healthy adult. She's never not taken food, you know, after she started eating. There are several other methods out there for assist feeding. One method I don't recommend is using something called a panky pump. And this is basically a metal syringe with a glass barrel. And you load in a small pinky mouse into the barrel. And then it's got this like wire mesh type set up at the tip of the barrel that basically macerates the pinky mouse into this disgusting milkshake like concoction and then you insert the uh, tip of the pinky pump into the snake's throat and you just basically squeeze and this disgusting roundup mouse is shot out at a very high velocity into your snake's throat. It, it's got to be really stressful for them to go through and they don't really get that many calories out of it anyway so highly not recommended. Trust me using a mouse tail works a lot better versus feeding your babies. Argentine boas like this one generally are really easy to get to feed, but I thought I'd grab her for the last segment of the video because she is such a beautiful boa to look at. The last thing I wanted to talk about was switching your baby boa from live to frozen thawed rodents. And in general, with my non-island boas, after they fed maybe three or four times on a live uh, rodent, I'll switch them to the fr frozen thawed. And most of them will take it pretty easily. Basically, I just kind of have to dangle it in front of their snout and move it a little bit. And then they attack it and constrict it and swallow it. 
With the island boas, it's quite a bit harder. Typically, I don't try until they're about six months old to move to frozen fod. And generally, I will have to use the jiggling technique. I just hold the fod rodent with a pair of tweezers in front of the animal snout and jiggle it back and forth. And then sometimes the, the animal, the bobo, will strike, but then release because the animal's not alive. And then I have to do it again. And I might have to do that like three or four times. And generally speaking, at this point, the snake will uh, eat the frozen thawed rodent. Sometimes it doesn't work. I have to go back to live. It can be kind of frustrating, especially with my Hawk Island boas. I'll come back to check a few hours later just to make sure that the baby boa has eaten the frozen thawed prey item because sometimes they just spit it out and you have to start from scratch. So I found that it helps to have fresh thawed frozen. So if you're uh, pinky or fuzzy is more than a few months old, it's going to lose its scent. So you want to start with nice, fresh, thawed, frozen animals, prey items. And also you want to make sure that they're warmed up to like body temperature to about 98 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, because the animal is a lot less likely to take the prey item if it's at room temperature. So there you have it, my procedures for getting baby boas to feed. I hope if you have some reluctant baby boas that some of these tricks work for you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.